Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bookish Babbles, the podcast where we reread our favorite books and chat about them. I'm your host, Allison, and without further ado, let's get started. everyone and welcome to another uh, bonus episode of bookish babbles in which i do a book tag it is uh currently 2 a.m i just finished watching spider-man 2 again and for whatever reason i decided i wanted to do a book tag so today we're doing the taylor swift book tag woo <laughs> so uh this was a tag that was created on youtube by the a channel called a uh, book life although when i clicked on the link to the original video it's no longer available it's privated or something so i uh, so to prepare for this uh, episode i wa- just watched uh, the video that katie tastic did so i'll link that one down in the show notes and without further ado let's get into the questions okay so the first song is we are never getting back together Pick a book or series you thought you were in love with, but then wanted to break up with. So, uh, for this question, I chose a Divergent by Veronica Roth. Now, um, I remember, like, the Christmas before the movie came out, or, like, well before the movie was announced or I even heard of it, uh, my mom actually gave me the first Divergent book for Christmas that year, and I think I read it in, like, a, in, like, a day or two, and, I don't know, it's just a really spe- special book to me because I really loved it when my mom gave to me and it's a really fun book too like it was like a 4.5 star book for me I think at the time when I read it and you know it kind of filled the Hunger Games void that I felt because obviously I was done with that series and it's a you know it's a really solid like fun YA dystopian book but um I think it was only really meant to be one book is the problem because i read Insurgent when it came out and it was fine I still enjoyed it and then Allegiant came out and just eh, it, it wasn't it wasn't very good sorry and I hated what happened at the end too so yeah I, I thought I was in love with the Divergent series still kind of am with the first book but um the rest of the series not not so much so, so sorry Divergent but we are never getting back together all right, next one is red. Uh, pick a book with a red cover. Very simple. So I chose uh, Ruin and Rising by Leigh Bardugo. It's the third book in the in the Grisha trilogy. And nothing more to say other than I like that book. And the edition I have is red. So that's my answer. Best day. Pick a book that makes you feel nostalgic. So I tried to pick an answer other than like Harry Potter and Percy Jackson because that can be my answer for almost anything. But uh, this time I decided to go with uh, The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Now I I really love the story of the of The Hobbit and I love Bilbo Baggins. I think he's probably one of the most relatable protagonists ever who because he's just a guy who wants to chill at home. Uh, read his books, eat his food, have a nice peaceful dinner, and he essentially gets dragged into in a, to fight a dragon by Gandalf and the dwarves, which is kind of relatable. I have to be dragged into things sometimes too. Um, but part of so part of the reason I like the book is because my dad and I bonded over it. Um, I remember being like ten years old in the fourth grade and. Whichever book we were assigned to read for class, there was a group of kids who who had already read the book that we were assigned to read, so they were assigned to read The Hobbit. And and I don't even remember what book we were reading for class, and I remember liking it, but when I heard what those kids were reading, I was like, wait, I want to read that. So I told my dad about it, because he knew the book from when he was a kid. So he, so he and I wrote... I remember reading it with him together, and that was fun. And then when I was in high school, the movie, the Peter Jackson movies came out, and that, and that was a lot of fun. Like, me and a big group of people went out to go see the first the first movie, and then and then um, Desolation of Smog was amazing. 
Battle of Five Armies movie, yeah, it was okay, but still a lot of fun memories attached to that book and those movies. So, yeah, that's my answer. Love Story, this, also known as, for me, the song that got me to start listening to Taylor Swift. Um, so, pick a book with a forbidden love. So, for this one, I went with uh, Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor, first book first book in a trilogy um there are angels and demons involved so yep big forbidden love right there I honestly don't remember much of what happens in this book other than I remember really liking I think I read it in like late high school early college actually I need to reread those books I still have them somewhere because I don't think I ever finished the third book which is I don't know why because I was really liking it, but a eh, story of my life of any reader. So yeah, Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. Recommend to anyone who wants a good forbidden love in a fantasy trilogy. I knew you were trouble. Pick a book with a bad character you couldn't help but love. This one was weird, was weirdly difficult for me to think of, possibly because it's after midnight, but also... Because I'm not usually drawn to the bad boy character. Like, they're like they're fine and they're really good and interesting characters. I'm just not, like, drawn to them in the way where I fall in love with them. But um, for this one, I went with Ka- with Kaz Brecker. Because I do love him. <laughs> he he would screw me over in a second if he, if he thought he had something valuable to gain from it. But, you know, still love him. As a character. But yeah. Well. I don't think I'll ever be able to get through any of these episodes without mentioning how much I love Six of Crows. By the way guys, did you know I love Six of Crows and I'm so excited for season 2 of Shadow and Bone? Anyway, moving on to the next question. In a scent, uh, pick a book that someone spoiled the ending for you. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Like. When I was in the middle of reading the series, one of my classmates told me, like, every single person who dies in by the end of every book. Didn't stop me from crying, though. Especially, especially at Fred's death. And Sirius's. And Lupin's. Why did everyone I love have to die? Anyway, that, that's my answer. I still, still love that book, but, you know. Shame it was spoiled for me. Moving on. Everything has changed. Pick a character who goes through extensive character development. You know, I almost said Matthias, but I put him as an answer for a similar-ish question in the last tag I did, so I had to think of someone else. And this time, I w- decided to go with uh, Gabriel Lightwood from The Infernal Devices. Now, this this person, man boy wait how old? no wait he he's 18 in that series anyway this young man um is essentially like the steve harrington of the of the infernal devices trilogy meaning like i absolutely hated him in the first book and i think through most of the second book too but then by the third book he has wonderful character development and becomes one of the most interesting characters I think in the whole series and he and he redeems himself he 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 done good good for you Gabriel glad everything worked out on to the next question you belong with me your most anticipated book release chain of thorns chain of thorns chain of thorns I need it now I need the last book in the last hours trilogy and I know it will very likely emotionally destroy me, potentially more than Clockwork Princess, which is saying a lot. I don't know. We'll find out when it comes out. But it is coming out in in November, and I am not emotionally prepared. I don't think I'll ever be emotionally prepared. And uh, my friends are going to have to put up with me (laughs) in that state. Oh, God. Uh, I'm so nervous about how everything is going to end. Also, I'm very much looking forward to the uh, to the Nico D- D'Angelo book that that's coming out with him with him and Will. Oh God! But I'm also terrified 
for Will because there's a, a trend in the Rick Riordan verse books where he t- has a tendency to kill off blonde boys. If anything happens to if anything happens to Will, we riot. I will lead those riots. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving moving on to the next question. For, forever and always, uh, pick your favorite book couple. And the answer is, I can't pick just one, so I'm going to mention a few. Uh, first, uh, Harry and Ginny from the Harry Potter series. They are my first book OTP, and I will ship them till the day I die, and I will forever be bitter about how the movies just absolutely butchered their rela- their relationship. Uh, again, the conspiracy theory. I think the screenwriter shipped Harry and Hermione when they shouldn't have anyway. Um, don't get me started. Um, other couple I want to give a shout out to are, of course, Percy and Annabeth. One of, one of, if not the best, like, fictional relationships I've ever seen, at least in terms of, like, young adult literature. Like, I, they're just a really good example of, like, a, na- like a, a natural and, like, healthy young relationship. And I think it's great to have that in young adult literature. And, of course, uh, Tess and Jem from the Infernal Devices. Absolutely lo- love them as a couple. And, of course, I do love Will, too. I just prefer Tess and Jem. And I do want to give, like, an honorable mention to Nico and Will. Like, because I think, I think, like, after the Nico novel comes out, they could become, like, a favorite book couple. I just, we haven't really seen them, like, fully functioning as a couple obviously in blood of olympus it was kind of hinted that they would get together and then we saw like the beginnings of their relationship in the first trials of apollo book and then the last one we get to see how they work more as a couple and they're really cute and i and i love them but i do think that in the in the solo novel coming up we can like learn more the ins and outs of their relationship and i'm excited to see that so yeah that's my that's my answer. On to the next question. Come back, be here. Pick a book you're least likely to lend out out of fear of missing it too much. So <clears throat> that's like 75% of my books at least. But just to name like a few, like the top ones that I'm definitely never lending out. Um, first of all, all my Shadowhunter books, especially um, Clockwork Princess, because not only is that my favorite in the series, but... I actually got it signed by Cassandra Clare, so yeah, nope, never letting anyone else borrow that one. Um, All my Rick Riordan books, just because those are very important. Uh, All my Alice Oseman books, um, Alice Oseman being one of my favorite authors, she wrote Radio Silence, one of my favorite books of all time, so yeah, nope, never loaning those ones out. And my Six of Crows, Crooked Kingdom uh, copies, I have like the hardback like first edition with the spray painted colored full ed- edges so and I think I don't think they print that anymore so not only because it's one of my favorite series I'm never lending out but because I have editions that I think are out of print so never lending those out and and also I have this one specific edition of In Ember in the Ashes that I will never lend out because is because is the because it is the like hardback first edition that they printed in the UK. It was really, really pretty, and it took me two years to track down a good copy of it. Cause um, I saw it in someone's like videos, and I'm like, "Ooh, that's really pretty. Where can I find it?" And again, it took me like two years to find a good one at like a reasonable price too. Cause so many were like over a hundred dollars and. I'm committed to pretty books and good covers, but not that committed. But finally, I managed to find one for like, th- for like thirty dollars or something. So that was so. Yeah, I'm never lending that one out to anyone. It stays with me. Dear drops on my guitar, pick a book that made you cry a lot. And I mean, quite a few books have made me cry a lot, but one of the most memorable is definitely Clockwork Princess. Because um, I was reading it the summer uh, before my junior year of high school. Yeah, because it was the summer right before I got my driver's license. Um, I was sitting up, I was at my grandma's house in the kitchen reading the book. And 
I was seeing Guardians of the Galaxy with my friends that night, and so, so my grandma was cooking was cooking me dinner, and I'm sit I'm sitting at the at the kitchen table reading the book. I'm about halfway through it, and I'm I'm at a part where a thing happens, and if you read the book, you know, and I couldn't take it. I started crying right then and there, and my grandma sits down, sees me crying, just pushes the tissue box toward me, and she's like, who died? <laughs> like, completely unamused. And so I ate, ate dinner, and my dad drove me to the mo- to the movies. I was sad to leave my book in the car, and I, di- and I could barely remember what had happened in the movie afterward. Um, cause I, cause I just, um, wanted to go home and read my book, which I did. And I finished it at like one, one o'clock that morning, screamed, cried, paced the living room when I finished reading it. But yeah, it was an event. And then for a long time, I thought Guardians was like a lo- like a lower tier Marvel movie just because I wasn't paying attention when I was watching it because all I wanted to do was read the book and that then then eventually I went back and I rewatched Guardians and I realized oh wait this is a really good movie I was just emotionally <laughs> distraught over other fictional characters <laughs> to appreciate how good of a movie it was anyway that's another embarrassing story about me on to the next question okay next is shake it off a book you love so much, you gotta shake off the haters. So, I'm going with uh, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins, because there are a lot of people who really don't like this book in the fandom. Like, they less it, they like it less than uh, Mockingjay, which, like, for some people, they either love or hate Mockingjay, and same thing for this for this one. And I understand why it's not everyone's favorite but I really do love it hence why I it's the first book I chose for this podcast so yeah I I I love I love ballad features Lucy Gray my favorite character in the whole series well other than PETA because how can you not love PETA but yeah I love but I love ballad and I don't care if you don't (laughs) have a nice night uh on to the next question. <laughs> All right, so these next questions are just some bonus questions that were on Nicole Miller's video video on YouTube, so I'll link that down below too. But the first one is Stay, 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 a book you wish could go on forever, and without a doubt, Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. I could, I could read about these characters forever, like what they do after the the events of the book, like, just their their day to day lives and possibly like and all their careers and how the podcast that's within the book um, University just expands. Uh, I like it, it's one of my favorites and I think more people should should read it and one day I will do a whole podcast episode on this book. But just some of my favorite parts of the book are just like Francis and Alad having all these cute like friendship moments together like when she takes care of him when he's when he's sick and like definitely like they're one of like my top three like bro tps like one of my favorite platonic relationships of all time and i just love the fact that that platonic relationship is like the main love story in the book so yeah i could read about these characters forever but i understand that it also is like the perfect standalone and doesn't need a sequel anyway on to the next question. All right, all too well, a series you wish could go on forever. And for me that would be the Land of Stories series by Chris Colfer cuz I don't know, I could just I could just keep reading stories about Alex and Connor exploring the fair, the fairy tale world, interacting with everyone and I don't know, learning more about the tragic backstories of all the villains cuz the villains like the evil queen and the enchantress were just some of the most interesting characters in that series and and yeah i love i love it uh, and if and it's one of the even though it's like middle grade like 
aimed for younger kids, I genuinely think it's a story in a series that anyone can like because I randomly like picked it up in high school I think because um I think I picked it up because we were on hiatus between seasons for once upon a time which is one of my favorite shows ever and I randomly saw it it, the first book in the land of stories at a store and I'm like oh this will fill the once upon a time void in my life and it did very successfully and I love those books so I highly recommend on to the next question Ronin, a book with a tragic character death. And for this one, I'm saying The Death Cure. Page 250. If you read the book, you know which scene I'm talking about. And I'm moving on now so I don't have to think about it anymore. Out of the Woods, a book that had you worried about the characters up until the very end. uh, Catching Fire. Like, never had... When I first read the book when I was like 14, never had 14-year-old me experienced so much anxiety all at once and so much worry for so many fictional characters because, you know, not only is cause, like, Katniss is, is being tested and told like, hey, try to quell the revolution. It's like, dude, you're asking a 17-year-old to try to stop this huge thing from happening. Calm down. And then, you know, when the quarter quelled, happens unlike the first arena where I was only rooting for like two or three people it's like I loved like so many like ev- everyone there's so many more characters I was attached to so I was like I don't want any of you to die and I don't know how this is gonna end ah! and then it did end in a very insane way and Catching Fire will forever be one of the best books ever so that's my that's my answer on to the next one and next we got Getaway Car, a book with a tempestuous romance. And I'm not good at picking this one because I'm not very good. Because I don't read, I haven't read too many books that I've like really loved with that kind of romance. So I just went with Slammed by Colleen Hoover. And I, I feel like, a, I think a lot of her books have relationships like that, but it's, been forever since I read Slammed. It's the only book by hers I've read, so I honestly don't remember, and I don't know if it would suit the suitable, if it's a suitable answer to this question, but too late. I've already committed, so Slammed by Colleen Hoover. All right, now we got Clean, a book that taught you something profound, and this one's kind of weird, but I think it works. Um, Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So the premise of this book is it shows like two separate timelines. So uh, like the main character like goes home. She runs into her ex and she gets and he's like, hey, you want to come out with me? And in one timeline, she says yes. And we see the events that play out after that. And another one, she says no. And again, we see how that plays out. And I don't know. It just. The concept of that has just kind of stuck with me because it's like it almost proves that like nothing is like always left like written in the stars or or left to fate where like our choices can lead to so many different paths but you know commit to the cho- to the choices we make and I don't know if this really makes sense especially cuz it is so late right now but I just recommend reading that book because it kind of makes you think about how life can play out. And it's still like a beautiful love story as well. Um, So yeah, that's my answer to that question. On to the next one. Alright, we're getting close to the end. So, Long Live, a book that transports you every time. Percy Jackson books, hands down, without a doubt, every time had to mention it at least once in one of the videos like just me being me I think every time I do a tag or Rick Riordan book or related answer has to be involved so yep that's my answer and these uh last two questions coming up are just uh bonus questions that I created all right so the first uh bonus question I came up with is picture to burn a book uh, you were happy to get rid of and 
The one I chose is this book called Unhooked. I don't remember the author's name and I don't care to look it up because I really did not like this book. It's one of those like um, YA dark Peter Pan itch retellings of a girl named Olivia and her best friend or was the best friend named Olivia. I don't even I don't even remember the main character's name. Uh, they get abducted by evil shadows to Neverland. Peter Pan's the bad guy. There's a sexy Captain Hook. Um, I don't know. I just didn't I didn't care for the book, and it had that weird like, like trope of like jealous female. It breaks up best friendship because of a van, which I, I really really didn't like, and I think I wrote a whole like essay or something on how much I hated that trope. So. Yep, unhooked by who knows. I don't don't know the author's name. Don't care because I really do not recommend this book. And moving on to the to the last question, so I don't have to think about it anymore. Okay, and the last uh, bonus question by me, and the last question of this tag is Enchanted, a book with a ship you strongly rooted for. By the way, when speak now, uh, Taylor's version is released because this is my favorite song on the whole on the whole album that I will very likely just be listening to that on repeat all day so anyway the answer to my question is uh Magnus and Alex from Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard like the second those two met and the second she chopped his head off during a training sequence in which he was fine afterward by the way he came back to life after that um, I don't know, lo- love at first sight, or he- or beheading, h- however the saying goes, for the two, for the two of them. But yeah, I love the Magnus Chase series, and no word on them getting any kind of on-screen adaptation, which is a shame, especially because it takes place in Boston. And I had a couple friends who went to school to in Boston, so when I went up to visit them, we would go to certain sites, and he'd be like, oh, that's where Magnus is, oh, look, over there, that would be a portal to the Nine Realms, good times, (laughs) anyway, so yeah, that wraps it up for the Taylor Swift book tag, hope you enjoyed it, it is now almost 3 a.m., I should probably get to bed, especially since earlier this night, I, um, recorded episode two, so, That'll be coming out on Tuesday, but yeah, I hope you guys have a great night and I will talk to you next time. Bye.